Hello, this is Clara, and I'm back again so soon to tell you about why I read. Growing up, my closest friends were a family of three girls. Jennifer was a self-proclaimed bibliophile. She had a sign on her door, the Cicero quote, A room without books is like a body without a soul. On the television in the living room, she had taped a Groucho Marx quote saying, I find television very educating. Every time someone turns on the set, I go into the other room and read a book. I would often get together with them for long periods of time, two or three nights at sleepover. So there was always time to read. If one of the three sisters would like hand me a book, the expectation was not that I would take the book home with me and then read it, but that I would start reading it before I left, preferably finish it before I left so that it wouldn't have to leave the premises. We almost always read fiction, often fantasy, sometimes historical fiction or some contemporary realistic, but we would talk about how and why some books worked and what characters we liked best and who we'd want to be friends with and all of that reading really shaped me profoundly. Still, when I'm curious about a topic, I'll just go to the library and get out some books on the topic. In the course that I took this past fall, uh, What Good Are the Arts? I just made a video about it. One of the topics we talked about was bibliotherapy. So the idea behind bibliotherapy is reading to improve one's like psychological state. This has some historic precedence. After World War I, uh, soldiers returning to Great Britain were given Jane Austen books to read, help them deal with their post-traumatic stress disorder, and reacclimate into society. There are other places that is being done more recently. Um, Jonathan Bate and his wife, Paula Byrne, made this book, Stressed Unstressed, just recently. It's a collection of poetry, and the, the inspiration for this collection came when their daughter was extremely ill and in the hospital, and like they weren't sure whether she was going to make it. And they were really stressed out in the in the waiting room and found themselves like going through poetry in their head, like things they'd memorized. And so they found that really helpful and that maybe this would help other people as well. So they put together this anthology of poetry. A lot of it's really well known. Some of them have to do with the rhythm of poetry or with meditation or a like theme in the poetry, but they're really beautiful. Really a pleasure to read. We read it throughout the course. Definitely recommend. Uh, another book we looked at in the bibliotherapy section was a book called The Novel Cure, which is essentially a giant list of book recommendations arranged topically. It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek and not meant to be taken as seriously as perhaps one might think. Um, in the section on fear of flying, they suggest books about terrible airplane crashes. And I'm like, hmm, I don't think that that would necessarily help me. I definitely would not pack that to read on a plane if I was frightened of planes. But um, it's certainly a very humorous book to read and a lot of fun. So if you're, if you're interested, it's The Novel Cure, um, From Abandonment to Zestlessness, 751 Books to Cure What Ails You, and it's by Ella Bertholdt. So recently I've been trying to expand what and why I read so that I'm able to listen more effectively, so that by listening to other people's experiences and perspectives I can live with maybe a bit more empathy and with courage. Some of what I've talked about on this channel is that I was realizing I was only reading books by white people and thought that was maybe something I would like to change. But I'm curious to know how literature or nonfiction or poetry has changed your life? Has your motivation for reading changed over the course of your life? Are there authors who shaped your thoughts as a young person about whom you now feel uncomfortable or critical? I'd love to hear about any of this. Um, please tell me about it in the comments. One of the reasons I think all of this matters is that the stories we tell shape our lives. In the US, I don't believe the inauguration this week would be for Donald Trump if it weren't for his little four-word story of a motto. Make America Great Again is a narrative. America was great. America has fallen. But I and you, if you vote for me, we can bring its salvation. We can make it great once more. This is incredibly skillful writing. It's a much, it's a much stronger motto than anyone else produced this whole election cycle. Even Bernie Sanders, a future to believe in, despite being so beautiful it makes me want to cry, doesn't have that imperative zip to it. But of course, 
I want to appreciate storytelling not just for their skill, but for their truth. The, like, back in the good old days, stories sound really great until you try to put a timestamp on them. And then it's like, well, are we talking about the 50s? Because that was really great like, if you were white and straight. Um, but not so great if you weren't. <laughs> um, and, like, World War II? Yeah, like, defeating Hitler was definitely a good thing. But us putting American citizens of Japanese origin into their own concentration camps, probably not so great. Um, and I worry that nostalgia without discernment will lead us to repeat mistakes of our past. And I don't mean to say there's nothing true in that story. I just mean that what made this little motto so appealing is not how true it is, but its narrative power, how well it fit into the way people already see their country. So I guess that's part of why I not only read, but have set up my life so that hopefully reading and writing and teaching people about this will be like my life work. I want to expand people's worlds and I want to give people the tools to understand the world they're in. I have never had to think about why I should read because it seems like trying to explain why I should breathe. It gives life. You suffocate without it. But I know that's not how a lot of people feel about reading. Um, so I thought I'd end with a few quotes from authors about reading. James Baldwin writes, You think your pain and heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive and who had ever been alive. And Madeline Langles, a book too can be a star, a living fire to lighten the darkness, leading out into the expanding universe. Thanks.